last time on My Valamor, we died, we got lost, where the hell are we? And we were aggressively fisted by a strange man around the back of a shed. Don't do it, I'm a virgin. Oh yeah, let's do this. Iron Man mode has trained us well! Yeah, I know, right? Ah! Yeah, it looks like they made Valamore accessible so that low-level players can take fun. Ah! 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 What? Possible. Is this too accessible for you? What you looking at? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, come on! Our dreams have been scattered. Or have they? Welcome back adventurers to part 3 of My Valamore! This week we've been getting incredibly sweaty trying to raise money to pay off our bounty. Our chosen strategy? Woodcutting and fletching. We got off to a promising start, although it didn't take long for me to realise that my get rich quick scheme was going to be the key to unlocking the most important content on this account. Grab your snacks, get hydrated, and let's begin. We kick things off with some fletching and woodcutting levels. Receiving a very cheeky maze random event, rewarding us with some mithril and chaos runes. We didn't enjoy our reward alone for very long as we received a couple of very spicy visitors. <laughs> After changing into a new set of clothes and very thoroughly washing our hands, we sold our oak shields to the general store for a disgusting amount of cash. Finally, we took a little stroll under the aqueduct to the willow trees, where we resumed the grind. Level 40, a monumental milestone, granting us new access to f fuck all. At level 41, we have the skills to wield a rune axe. Now all we need is the skills to obtain one, and we are groovy. The levels were coming in fast, I was starting to feel unstoppable. I was quickly put back in my place when the mysterious old man appeared, told me I had no friends, refused to elaborate, and disappeared. Thanks for that mate, really appreciate it. There are no breaks on the Valamore Express, we now have 45 woodcutting. We now have the power to chop maple trees. But we won't cause we can't cause there aren't any here. Just gotta keep on loving these willows. I love you willow trees. Mwah. 34 fletching, another bird's nest, and a clue nest with a medium tier clue scroll. God Ash himself confirmed that three medium clue steps have been added to Valamore, so the Ranger Boots dream might not be so outlandish after all. 35 fletching moves us up to Willow Short Bows. Yet another evil Bob random event granted us the gift of noted diamonds. I held on to these for far longer than I should have. The crafting level required to do anything useful for these is a long way off yet, but I still haven't developed the ultimate Iron Man instinct for dropping unnecessary items. They're just too shiny, they're too shiny. Skipping ahead a bit, 38 fletching gives us black brutal arrows, another useless unlock for the account, but it's all good because the next level 39 grants us access to Willow iron crossbows. That being said, there's no way to make them because there's no spinning wheel in Valamore. There was a spinning wheel in the Blueprints map, but I guess the devs just changed their minds. Thanks. 50 woodcutting doesn't mean much for us right now. However, after completing the riveting tale of the Lilypad labor dispute, there is in fact a hardwood farming patch that we gain access to. So one day, who knows, we may have a little mahogany tree all of our own. We're gonna have to wait a little bit longer before we can complete that quest, since to advance the quest to its final stage, we do actually have to steal something off someone. And until we've paid our bounty, we are not just a region restricted account, we are a thieving restricted account. God fuck me damn it. 
why get 39 fletching when you could get 40 fletching? That's right. Now we're really cooking with peanut oil, boys. Having successfully fletched our first willow schlongbo, we make our way back to the general store to compare sizes, our uh, prices. <clears throat> the willow shortbow sells to the shop for 40 gold coins, whereas the longbow sells for 64. I guess size does matter after all. 10% of 64 is 6.4, which does mean that when the shop is overstocked, as it will be, we will only be getting about 6.4 gold pieces per bow. The road to 165k is looking longer and longer with every second. Greetings from the future. We have been busy. Here is Poison Swamp. And here is my Valamor. And here is a forestry kit. It may not look like much, but this little green backpack is going to save us a lot of time. Remember how I mentioned that our woodcutting and fletching grind was going to be the key to unlocking this account? Let me explain why. Varlocked Discord member Varlamoon revealed to me that if you train woodcutting whilst wearing a forestry kit, you have a chance to spawn one out of nine distinct forestry activities. One of these forestry activities grants hunter experience. So, by training our woodcutting, we train our hunter. We may have the woodcutting level to cut teaks, but it's still quite slow. I still need to train my fletching, and teak stocks are pretty shit. So it's back to the willow trees. I'm only using an iron axe, and the progress is slow. But I am really enjoying this. Our first forestry event at the Willows. Friendly Entlings. Give them a haircut, get fletching experience. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. And they're gone. See you next time, little weird tree things. This, this is what we want. This is, mm, mm, uh. This random event has five outfit pieces and two emotes. Once we have all of them, the next reward we'll get is guaranteed to be a lamp. This is only good news for us. We got the zombie walk emote. One slot filled, no inventory space taken up. Taking a short break from forestry to go and complete the riveting tale of the lily pad labor dispute. Please bear in mind that this clip was recorded before I became aware of the thieving shenanigans. No thieving experience gained, and no thieving skill requirement, but just spiritually thieving, you know? We robbed this guy. It counts, I reckon. He didn't deserve it. Probably. Maybe he did. I don't know. No thieving! We have sabotaged this lily pad to rig an election for talking frogs. Everything is well. There goes the first contestant. Nine out of ten from the judges. Uh, oh! Oh! Oh dear. Okay. I think someone mentioned that he can't swim. Hello. How are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You're too much raining. What have we done? His blood is on our hands. Uh, yep, as I suspected, a locked chest that requires breaking into. We can't do it, we can't do this. We are thieving restricted. So we are going back to the willow trees, back to the grind and continue getting sweaty. A dryad event, stand in the glowing circles, don't ask questions, take your XP and fuck off. Struggling saplings, practice your precision clicks without getting carpal tunnel. When you get into the flow with this one, it is incredibly satisfying. Another dryad? Once wasn't enough for you, was it, love? All right, give us your circles, we'll stand in them. This one's pretty chilled, actually. I even got my alt involved. Come on, come on, you can do it. Hey, there we go. The Roots event. This one gives wicked woodcutting experience and rewards you with anima-infused bark. No current use for the bark on this account. However, should the devs decide to add a forester in one of the future phases, this anima bark will be extremely useful, so I'm gonna hold on to it. I can always drop it later if I change my mind. Ha <laughs> This is what we need. Beautiful, delicious hunter experience. And this is just about the antithesis of what we need as an ultimate Iron Man. A pop-up bank deposit box. The Blossoming Flowers event grants anima-infused bark and woodcutting experience, along with some strange fruit at the end of the event depending on how well you did. Not very useful, but not terrible either. Right, feeling fruity, we're going back to the teaks. 
Higher tier of tree means higher chance for a forestry event per roll. Let's get it. Camping the teaks on a forestry world. It wasn't long before an entire gang had assembled. Forestry is, after all, supposed to be a social activity. So grab your mates, come on down. Come and get a bit of the action. Look at the techers. I've lined the trees up perfectly. Witness the techers. Now every time the tree respawns, it's just a quick click. One, two, bang, what, pa, bang. We got the pet. No, we didn't. It's just someone stood under me. Pheasant tree event I cannot take part in. Why? <sighs> because it grants thieving experience, which is really a pity because this event can unlock quite a fashionable outfit. I think it, I think it looks pretty cool. You know, it's 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 it, it's uh, it's stylish. Um, uh, evokes the outdoors. You know, it it it, it broadcasts. I am capable. I can get stuff done. But I can't, because I can't fucking steal shit! Now you see, this is what happens when you broadcast your desires to the universe! Two pheasantry events in a row, back to back. Not cool! Look at this frog, look at this frog. He is determined to sabotage our efforts. Look at him. I'm just gonna sit, I I'm just, I'm just gonna sit on this little piece of shit here. I'm just gonna, you, now you click on me, you, you wanna talk to me, I'll talk to you. Oh, oh, you busy? You, you're busy? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I'm just sitting on my little piece of shit. I'm not trying to get in anyone's way, man. The gang rolled up to the willow trees. I'm not one to say no to a bit of sociable skilling, so I headed down there with my steel armor. I found some steel armor. I bought some steel armor. I didn't find it. I bought it. Anyway, I have steel armor now. I mean, I don't keep it for very long. I sell it because it's, it's kind of heavy and I'm not doing any combat, so eh, what's the point? Anyway, steel armor. There it is. The gang! Easy clue scroll nest, don't mind if I do. Let's check it out. And drop it. Been using the leaves from these forestry events to train my farming by making compost. And here comes level five. I now have the expertise to grow onions. As far as I'm aware, the most effective way to get seeds in Valamore at this level is to steal them from master farmers. So no seeds. Meanwhile, the gang, emboldened by their success at the Willows, have decided to give the Teeks a try. Sacrificing potential fletching gains and one crew member in the name of woodcutting and forestry. Another fox event brings us one step closer to level 2 hunter. Let's take a butcher's hook at our stats. Considerable progress since we last visited the skills tab. Most of it being woodcutting and fletching, with some minor improvement in farming, prayer and combat skills. We'll start giving those skills more love later on. Another struggling sapling event brings our farming level to 7, giving us access to the hallowed cabbage crop. Andrew Gower would be proud. The gang having departed for the night, my alt, myself, and this guy, <laughs> hauled ass to the yew trees in town. More endlings! Haircuts for everyone! Behive yourself! Haha, <laughs> get it? <clears throat> Construction experience. Yes, indeed, the yew trees are a nice spot in a beautiful part of town. The forestry events were coming and going, things were looking good. After a while, though, we did start to feel a little lonely. That is until the gang got back online. Nothing beats good company, so we went back to our old haunt at the willow trees for more social skilling. Woodcutters assemble. Begin. Level 53 fletching, yet another legendary weapon we'll never own on this account. Another farming level brings us to level 8, one level away from planting these guam seeds. It ain't much, but it's honest work. It's time to free up some space and shed some weight. Fletching just isn't bringing in the big bucks like I mistakenly believed it would, so we're changing up our tactics. Player named South Zaya revealed to me a very shrewdly hidden item spawn. Eclipse Wines are found above two ladders in the southernmost building of the Hunter's Guild. At 400 gold pieces each, we'll be smuggling wines to repay our debt to society. You can take the boy out of the crime, but you can't take the crime out of the boy. They're just lying there, after all. What if somebody tripped on them? Yes, this is, without a doubt, the right thing to do. 
Gathering and selling the wines to make up 165,000 gold took about three and a half hours. The account enjoyed zero progress during this time. No experience was gained. A fitting way, I felt, to pay off our thieving debt. Remember, the whole point of this bounty was to serve as a penalty for the unfair advantage we gave ourselves at the start of the series. By giving ourselves an expensive and lengthy time sink like this, that advantage was hopefully mitigated. Since, in the time it takes us to raise this money, a new player with level 1 thieving could realistically reach our thieving level in Valamor. There it is. 165,000 gold coins. With this cash stack, we repay our debt and earn our freedom. What are we going to do with our accumulated bounty? Well, I feel it's important to give back to the community that you're a part of. Therefore, I will be dropping this money in Fortis Bazaar for the other thieving players to claim for themselves. All right, there it is. It's gone. Now, let's celebrate. There it is, the stolen amulet. Time to pass it back to the knights, wash our hands of this ordeal, and move the quest to its next step. Here's another knight, she's absolutely sloshed, and needs to sober up. The only thing for it is to get her stuck in a fountain so her stepbrother can come and help. That's usually how these things go, right? Yeah, we should probably leave for this next bit. With our farming finally at level 9, we can begin working through these accumulated Guam seeds, eventually freeing up another inventory slot and bringing in some much needed herb lore experience for our little farmer. We'll have to get to 70 herb lore to enjoy the content planned for phase 2, so this small beginning is the start of a much, much longer herb lore journey. Back at the teaks with the gang! Very fast woodcutting at incredibly high speeds. If this were 2006, there would be more than a few axe heads flying around. Since we're here, and since we're no longer thieving restricted, we decide to finish up this quest by viciously caving in the head of the poor frog we definitely didn't attempt to drown earlier in the episode. Sorry mate, it's a frog eat frog world. Or a, a man kill frog world. I don't know. Man, you try writing this stuff, okay? Alright, quest complete. 2,000 woodcutting experience is like drops in the ocean at this point, but now we can get our wood hard anytime we like. Another friendly visit from the kindly Iron Man from the last episode, and it looks like she's been enjoying some perilous moons. Would you just take a look at that blue moon spear? Absolutely gorgeous. Really gets me in the mood for some PVM. Yet another fox event, we are just teetering on the edge of Hunter level 2, just 7 experience points to go. A drill sergeant, random event, finally we can get back to collecting outfit pieces and working our way towards earning faster lamps. Our prize this time is the camo top, best in slot fashion for now, look at that. Gorgeous! More pheasants, more feathers, we now have enough to craft 3 of the 4 pieces of the outfit. After throwing a few pots back in town, we reach the weird crafting level of two and stitch together some fine, fine threads. Ooh, ah, yeah. Damn, we look good. Fun fact about the leprechaun that I wasn't aware of earlier, standing in his pretty little rainbow grants an experience boost for the next few logs chopped, along with some anima-infused bark. Our pile of bark is getting pretty substantial now. 67 woodcutting! Eliminated to purchase a felling axe. Okay, so forestry is the way forward, which means more woodcutting, which means we need to upgrade. This iron axe is just not cutting it. Nah, cutting it. Yeah. So here we go. Level 15 mining, not a goal we particularly care about at this stage, rather a byproduct of our much, much more important grind for level 15 smithing. Now we're entering the Iron Age, and with a nice open inventory, we are in the perfect position to travel to the Sunset Coast and exploit the iron bar spawn in the helmet shop. Let's save that grind for next time.
So here we are. We've got the fashion. We've got the levels. We're depth free. We have a lamp. Let's talk. This lamp represents a decision that we have to make. What we choose to lamp today, we must continue to lamp tomorrow. It's a big commitment. So we must choose wisely. Hunter can be trained with forestry. No need to lamp that one. Construction can also be trained with forestry. Runecraft is locked behind rune mysteries, so we can't lamp it even if we wanted to. So what should we lamp? Well, I think that we can... Uh, what, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you... Wha whoa, whoa! Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay. All right, we're doing that, are we? All right, then. Fuck. One lamp down, 262 to go, then. That's correct. As a Valamore locked account, the only way to train Slayer is by using lamps. So that's what we're going to do. This could take us over a year. The work will be hard. But a dream not worth working for is a dream not worth having. We will persevere, and we will succeed. This is my Valamore! Right, now listen. Um, what to do? I like your trousers. Well, no, at least he's trying. He's making an effort. You should have gone the whole hog. Maybe some nice, hey, we're out in the outdoors, some nice chaps. Suede, but ventilated at the back. And that shirt, you've picked up that colour. Have you been getting advice? Maybe we turn our attention to the bears now, his to skin, Paddington. His skin's flaking. You should moisturise. No, it's, what? You, you should moisturise. Just a bit. In the moisturise. It's because your skin's flaking. Because off. you're dry. You look like something found in a pyramid. <laughs> let's, have, let's have a look at the sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting that in the British Museum. 